Cornelius Gerhardus van Royen was a South African pedophile and serial killer, although he was never convicted, who, together with his female partner Joey Harhoff, abducted and apparently murdered at least six young girls between 1988 and 1989. Their victims were never found as the pair committed suicide when faced with arrest after the escape of their last kidnapped victim. Van Royen's first crimes were theft, for which he was sent to a reform school in 1954, for stealing a car which was used as transport from Cape Town to Pretoria to visit his dying mother, followed by imprisonment in 1960 for stealing motor spares and clothing. He married and subsequently fathered six children, Anna Marie, Judith, Hannes, Flippy, Gerard and Adrian. He ran a building construction business together with his brothers. In 1979, Gerard van Rooyen abducted two girls aged 10 and 13, taking them to the Hartebeerspoor Dam near Pretoria, where he punched them in the face to force them to strip naked and perform sexual acts. Van Rooyen released the girls in Pretoria the following day. He was subsequently arrested and sentenced to four years imprisonment for abduction, sexual assault and common assault of the girls, serving three years before being released. In August 1983, Van Royen and his wife Aletta divorced. In 1988, he started dating divorcee Joey Harhoff. The couple holidayed together at warm baths in Amblotti on the KwaZulu-Natal coast. Van Royen was thought to use Harhoff to lure young girls for him. Children's Homes reported that she telephoned requesting to bring girls home for the holiday and weekends. The couple applied to foster children, but the application was turned down. At the end of 1989, a 14-year-old girl from an orphanage in the Urania Free State spent the Christmas holiday with the couple. On the 1st of August 1988, 14-year-old Tracy Lee Scott Crossley of Randburg near Johannesburg disappeared. She was seen by witnesses climbing into a Volkswagen Beetle outside the Cresta shopping mall. Her brother, who had declined an offer to go with her, was severely guilt-ridden and traumatized by her disappearance. In later life, he was found guilty of the murder of a farm worker and convicted. On the 22nd of December 1988, 12-year-old Fiona Harvey of Peter Maritzburg disappeared. A white Ford Bantam Bucky used in her abduction with an advertisement for Van Royen's building construction business on it would later link him to this crime. On the 7th of June 1989, 12-year-old Joan Horn of Pretoria disappeared. In July 1989, 16-year-old Janet Delport of Durban disappeared after being abducted in a shopping mall by a blonde woman. She was later found wandering around distressed but unharmed. Some weeks later, nine-year-old Rosa Peel of Alberton disappeared. On the 22nd of September 1989, 11-year-old Odette Boucher of Kempton Park disappeared with 12-year-old Anne-Marie Varpener, also from Kempton Park. They were taken together. On the 29th of September 1989, Kobe Varpener, Anne-Marie's mother, received a letter from her daughter claiming that she and Odette had run away to Durban with some boys. Odette's letter arrived a week after Anne-Marie's. Although it was posted on the same day, 23rd September 1989 in Durban, it is suspected the letter was written under distress. On the 3rd of November 1989, Yolanda Vessels, the 13-year-old niece of Van Royen's partner Joey Harhoff, disappeared. On the 11th of January 1990, 16-year-old Joanne Boyson of Pretoria was abducted by Harhoff in Church Square, Pretoria. She was taken to Van Royen's home in Mulhaber Street, Capital Park, where she was handcuffed, drugged and sexually assaulted before being locked in a cupboard. It is likely that Van Royen thought the small girl was younger than she was. She managed to escape and alert the police who placed her home under surveillance and four days later identified Van Royen when he drove past his house in a Ford Bucky that matched the description of a vehicle used in one of the abductions. 
Van Royen shot Haarhoff with a .22 revolver and himself with a .357 revolver. All the above disappearances, with the exception of Rosa Peel, were linked by witness statements or forensic evidence to Van Royen and Haarhoff following their deaths. For example, Odette Boucher's home address, phone number, that was written on a piece of paper and hidden under a carpet in the garage and class captain's badge and yellow PT bag as well as Anne-Marie's address and home keys as well as the envelopes and papers they wrote to their parents were found in his home. None of the Van Royen's victims were ever found despite extensive police searches of his business premises and house. In 1996, Absa Bank donated Van Royen's former house to the police to allow the girl's disappearance to be investigated further. On 13th of May 1996, police systematically demolished the house in a search for new forensic evidence that might provide clues to the girl's fate. The roof was removed and vacuumed for traces of human hair and nails. Then the walls demolished and the kitchen and main bedroom scanned with sonar equipment for cavities. The soil in the garden was sifted and some bones found, but forensic pathologists identify these as non-human. In February 2001, Flippy van Royen, Gerd van Royen's son, was found guilty of perjury in the Pretoria Magistrate Court. He was charged with three counts of perjury after giving police conflicted statements under oath relating to the six missing schoolgirls. Flippy was then already in jail for the murder of a 15-year-old Zimbabwean girl. He was paroled in 2008. Another son, Gerard, was sentenced to 15 years in prison for theft and fraud. On the 12th of March 2007, renewed interest in the case occurred after a set of adolescent bones when found on the beach near Umdloti, KwaZulu Natal, about 500 meters from a holiday resort that Van Royen and Haarhof are known to have visited. Subsequent DNA testing did not identify any of the Van Royen's victims. In November 2007, bones were discovered in a property adjacent to Van Royen's house in Pretoria, while ground was being dug up to install a swimming pool. Local authorities were alerted and police forensic experts were to determine if the bones were human. The 30-year-old cold case has been reignited since its original investigating officer, now retired career cop Don Chandler, began re-examining the evidence in his personal capacity. Chandler said investigators working with the case have evidence that show Van Royen was regularly at Durban Harbour and suspicion on Rife that he may have had connections at the harbour who had helped him to traffic girls. Chandler said that the most recent investigations point to the possibility that the kidnapped victims might have been trafficked to Mauritius, where companies that shipped cargo from the company where Van Royen worked were based. He added that a UK tycoon who has received royal recognition is being looked at as being involved. So what do you think? Do you think Gerd van Rooyen disposed of the bodies in South Africa? Or do you think he had help trafficking the girls to Mauritius? Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.